Okay, so independent events. So independent means that it's gonna happen independently from the other event. So the two events, say we roll a dice and we choose from a deck of cards, those are two different events that have nothing to do with each other, okay? That's independent. Dependent means that the two events, one of them is gonna depend on the other one. So if we have, like yesterday, we had a big old bowl of tickets. So every time we took a ticket out, the number of, the total number of tickets decreased, right? So that would be dependent. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the independent. So the probability of two independent events can be found by multiplying the probability of the first event by the probability of the second event. So yesterday we did those probabilities. We're gonna do the same thing today except we're gonna do it twice and then multiply those fractions together. Okay, so for independent, we're gonna set up two fractions and multiply them together and simplify. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, so example one, two number cubes. What's a number cube? It's a cube that has a number. So like a dice. Okay, just a dice. How many sides are on a dice? Six. 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 Why did it pause up there? Oh, there it goes. So there's six sides on a dice. So one through six. One red and one blue are rolled. We have a few announcements. I'm sorry, we're late getting this done. Okay, so two number cubes or dice, one red and one blue are rolled. What is the probability that the outcome of the red number cube is even and the outcome of the blue number cube is a five? So don't be tripped up that they're giving you two different scenarios. We're going to do it one at a time. So remember, our dice has one through six sides on it. So the probability of the first one that the red cube, uh, number cube, is even. So good. It would be for the red, 3 over 6 or 1 half, right? So the red number is even. Okay, so then now ignore the red. We're looking at the blue. The outcome or the probability that the blue number cube will roll a 5. Good. So 1 over 6. So we did exactly like we did yesterday. We just did it twice with two different events. So now all we have to do is multiply those two numbers together. So 1 half for the red cube, that was our probability, times 1 sixth for the blue cube. Remember, if you're multiplying fractions, you just, you just multiply across. So when we're multiplying, the denominators doesn't matter. We just multiply across. Good. No, multiply across. We're just multiplying these fractions. Good. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 6 is 12. So that very bottom, the probability that the two events will occur is 1 12th. That's it. So you're doing just like you did yesterday. The only difference is that you're doing it twice and then you're multiplying those numbers together. So that's independent. So now dependent, if two events, so A and B, whatever they may be, are dependent, then the probability of both events occurring is the product of the probability of A and the probability of B after A occurs. So like the first part, we did two different fractions. There were two different scenarios going on. They really didn't have anything to do with each other. This time, the second fraction will be affected by whatever happened the first time. So let's do this practice problem so that makes sense to us. So example two, six black socks and four white socks are in a drawer. So how many total do we have? Ten. Ten. So, if one sock, if one sock is taken out without looking, 
if one sock is taken out without looking and then a second is taken out, what is the probability that they both will be black? Six over So, three. hold on. Just like we did on the first one, we're going to do this one at a time. So, Trey just said it. The very first probability of the first sock is black. There's six black socks. There's ten total. So, Trey was right. Six over ten. Can we reduce that? Yes. Yes. Three. Yep, it is. Fifth. Good. Okay, so the first probability that the first sock would be black is three over five. So then the probability that the second sock will be black. So hold on. We started with ten, but we took a sock out. So how many socks Nine. total are left? Nine. So that's going to be my bottom number now. Same thing with the black socks. We had six, but we said we took one out. So there's five left. So five over nine. That can't be simplified. And that can't be simplified. So the second time we did it, pulled a black sock, and the probability was five over nine. Okay, so then the last question, the probability that we'll have two black socks. And you go down to eight. So just like we did on the top part with the independent or yeah, the independent events, we're just gonna multiply these two numbers together. Oh. So 3 over 5 times 5 over 9. You can simplify it. Just 3 sixteenths. Mm -hmm. oh. So 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 9 is 45. One third. One third. Three, one third. three five. fifteenths, and then you can go down one more time. One third. So the probability of choosing two black socks is one third. one third. So that's what it means by dependent. Your second fraction depends on whatever happens the first time. So our total number decreased and our number of black socks decreased. <laughs> this will make more sense the more practice we do. So these exercises, a card is drawn from a deck of 10 cards numbered one through 10 and a number cube is rolled. How many sides are on a number cube? Six. Six, so we've got numbers one through six. Determine each probability. So since we're looking at two different things, we've got cards and we've got dice, this is an independent event. We're just looking at the two separate events. They don't affect each other. So number one, the probability of pulling a 10, a number 10 card, and the three on a dice. So do them separately. So look at 10 first. What's the probability of pulling the number 10 card out one of that deck? Ten. One out of 10. But I don't get how we're, what? Getting one. Are you dropping over six? One so, one. but you're looking at the chance that you'll roll a three. One so one out of six. That's what I said. That's what I <laughs> Okay, so we've got the probability for your cards, <coughs> pulling a 10, the probability of uh, rolling a three on your dice, so then multiply those two together. One over six. One over six. Yes. A dying dice would be good. Die. Yeah, so it should be uh, that is their number. die, I think. <laughs> See. Number two, the probability. Shh, the probability of two even numbers. So the probability of pulling a number card, an even number card, on your deck of ten. One out of four, four out of ten. So for your cards, we've got two... Two, four, six, eight, Ooh. ten. Oh, so, five. so five out of ten, or one half. One half. Then your your die. If you've got one through six, and the even numbers on our die are two, four, six. One half. Good. Three out of six, or one half. Okay, then last step, just multiply those two together. One half, good, times one half.
gonna be two Wait, pairs. Wait, you get the same thing? It'll be if one you, more. It's one. Multiply. One, one for it, yeah. because you remember you're multiplying. So one times one is still just one. Two oh. times two, four. Two and two. Okay, so number three, two prime numbers. Okay, so remember, prime numbers are those numbers that have only two factors, one and the number itself. So it should be two, three, five, and seven. But it only has two factors, two and one. So two, three, five, and seven. That's all of your prime numbers. It's four, four, four over ten, Good. and three over six. So four out of ten for our cards, since we have ten cards, oh, four you. of those numbers are prime. Two fifths. And you can reduce it down to two fifths. Mm -hmm. and then, then for our die, six. good, three over six. Reduces down to one half. Good. So two fifths okay. times oh, one half. Two. That's a five. Two fifths times one half, and then multiply those together. That gives us. Trace said it. Two tenths, and that reduces to one fifth. Good. Okay, number four, the probability of landing on a nine and an odd number. They forgot the D and and. No, they did. And oh, N. I was looking at N. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so do the first one. So nine. What's the chances of landing on a nine, nine on those cards? Nine is an odd number, though. But nine well, is talking about the cards. See, I got confused, too. So nine, the number nine, we're talking about what's the chance of landing on the card number nine out of those one through ten cards. One out of ten. There's only one number nine card. And then on your dice, you have one, two, three out of six. Good. Five. Mm -hmm. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Eight. Good. So one over twenty is our chance, our probability of both. Why do you have to video this? There's a back. There is a back. That's dependent. Okay, so number five, the probability of two numbers less than four for both. So on your cards, two numbers less than four. What? Cards have two, four, six, eight. So what are the numbers less than four? Okay, three, two, one. So if we're thinking about our cards, we've got 10 cards. So how many numbers are less than four with those cards? We've got one through 10. Three over 10? Three over 10. Three over 10. Well, there's actually a gazillion, like a gazillion. We're looking at, no, one through 10 cards. That's what we're looking at right now. Three over six. And then your dice should be three over six. Reduced down to one half. Yeah, that can reduce. So three tenths times one no, half. Three is not going to six twenty. Three over twenty. Good. So three over twenty is as small as we can make that fraction. Okay, last one. The probability of two numbers. Greater than five. So let's list all of the numbers greater Six, than seven, five. Eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So, nine, so, nine, so for our cards, five over ten. Good. five over ten of them are bigger than the number five. So yeah, that reduces down to be one half. And then one, one over six. Over, yeah. Perfect. One over. There's only one number greater than five on your dice. So then we multiply those two probabilities together, one half times one six, one twelve. Good guys. That's it.